Here we have the story from the Daily Mail. They are not your kids. DeSantis and Musk slam White House for pride tweet celebrating LGBTQI uh, community and, quote, our kids that are part of it. In the post, it says these are our kids, not somebody else's kids. They're all our kids. That is unbelievable. I mean, I shouldn't say it's unbelievable. It's predictable. But that is the, like, they're just openly is so the obvious. quiet part loud. It's, it's obvious mm -hmm. because they're not happy. Liberals are not having kids. They're aborting their kids, and in many instances now, they are sterilizing or increasing the, the, the likelihood of sterilization of these kids. But what kind of we, creep says that, right? A if creep who knows that their political faction doesn't have voters. They're yes, not, they're not but, just well, saying but this it. is my point. They're, they're not just saying it. You're right. They're acting on it. But yeah. if, if anyone else, like if somebody came up to you in public and said, those aren't your kids, those are our kids, how would you respond to that? Person? I would show them a picture of the communist meme with Drake <laughs> pointing to going go like this to my kids and then pointing to our kids. <laughs> I would call the police. Yeah, if someone said your kids are mine. <laughs> yeah, if they calling nine one one. Your kids are mine. <laughs> I would. I, I'm not sure if I'm able to say on air what the. the I would ask. Is, I would ask if they live in a. That, but I would ask if they live in a house made of candy. They're, they're passing <laughs> legislation in all sorts of blue states to make this a reality. Mm -hmm. Right. Where they yeah. can take your California. kids away from you if you don't agree that your girl is a boy. Mm -hmm. That was California has well, passed a lot of something states. through the House of Representatives. I think into their Senate hasn't There's, gone through their, their state house. It's, it's now advanced to their state Senate in California. And they're saying that if you don't affirm your child, that uh, they could they could restrict visitation or take custody of your kids. Yeah, well, they consider it child abuse. They're already yeah. a sanctuary state so that if there's a custody dis dispute going on in Texas, for example, and this mom wants to transition the kid, she can take the kid to California. And California will now ignore all court orders, subpoenas, arrest warrants, or custody agreements so that this child this, can be transitioned or a runaway as well. So they'll hide the runaway from the parents and they won't return them home. So, so and they'll ignore the laws of the home state, which should violate the constitution. This needs to be challenged. And this is, this, this is reminiscent to me of the American civil war hmm. when they had the runaway, I think it was the runaway slave act. Mm -hmm. You had uh, states in the North saying that we will absolutely not abide by these, uh, by this law and the South saying, then why are we a part of this union? Mm -hmm. Southern states were like, well, if we have a law then, and you don't follow it, what's the point? Mm -hmm. Now, the circumstances, of course, are, are different. The moral questions are different. I'm wondering what the major catalyst will be. Maybe it's abortion. Mm -hmm. Abortion seems to be a direct 14th Amendment uh, question in this country and uh, a 14th Amendment violation in, in most regards. So I wonder if that'll be the catalyst. But I also kind of think, you know, I don't know if the uh, uh, transgender kid stuff will be the catalyst. And it's because... I listened to audio from Matt Walsh of a father saying they took his kid away and were putting her on cross-sex hormones. And it's like he's upset about it and he doesn't want it to happen, but that's the extent of the action that he's taking, right? Mm. I feel like when it came to John Brown and when it came to slavery, you had active conflict for a decade of people killing each other over this stuff that you don't really have right now in any of these social issues. Yeah, I, well, I think there's a few. So I, I hear what you're saying about this not necessarily being a potential catalyst for massive conflict. But I also think that when you're talking about people's children, it's just a question of how many kids you do this to before somebody gets violent. It's going yeah. to happen. You're right. They, I guess they haven't landed on those people who are going to respond violently to them, but it, they will eventually. No, 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 no. no. I don't, I'm not talking about uh, uh, civilians. I'm talking about government. At You're talking what, about like the, at the state level. At what okay. point do, does the federal government or law enforcement say you must return the child under, okay, the, under the code of the law? Mm -hmm. And then California says no. And then troops will have to be sent to California to enforce mm -hmm. the law. When, when we're, you know, so I, you know, people get violent for all sorts of things. And, and we, we definitely don't want that. And we need, we, we want civility. We want peace. And at this point, I think violence actually just empowers them because it terrifies people and they're able to use terrorism as a weapon yeah. i'm saying like at what point does texas say we we we, we are demanding the return of mm -hmm. this man's child to california and california says we're not going to answer your subpoena like you said yeah. they're gonna they're gonna ignore subpoenas warrants etc at what point does is how can there be an intervention does texas then petition the federal government saying we need federal assistance to to enforce these laws between states what will likely occur, I'd imagine, is a lawsuit under original jurisdiction going to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court might just reject it outright and say, we're not going to listen to this. And then you're going to have Texas be like, we're sending the Rangers. 
we're going to send law enforcement to California to retrieve this man's child because we have the force of law behind us and these people have committed crimes. California is now harboring criminals. What point do states actually send law enforcement after each other? Yeah, it's a good question. I've, how does this all go? How does society go? So this is a big question because it seems we're so divided, almost irreparably so. And each political party really stoked division. Mm -hmm. The media, of course, stokes division. It almost seems irreparable. I think we need an extremely strong and truthful and compassionate leader who can unite. But that's almost impossible as well with this social media age. But I'm an eternal optimist, and I do think it's possible. But I don't really see that person. Trump winning? Is he a uniter? There's no uniting. Mm -hmm. There's only um, weeding out corruption. So was Reconstruction after the Civil War in the United States un uniting the country? Now, you can argue it was, but it was brutal. I mean, uh, getting rid of slavery, I think, was paramount, and it was good that it was done. But if you hear the stories about how the Civil War went down and what the North was doing in the South, I mean, it's, it's, it's brutality. Mm -hmm. It's untold brutality. I mean, it's, 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 it's horrifying. Uh, Sherman's march to the sea, the ransacking of civilian property, the destruction of everything in his, in, 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 in his path, just because they're like, we're going to win and we're going to destroy it. It's scorched earth. If Donald Trump gets elected and these states openly defy the federal government, insurrection. He will then cite everything they've said about January 6th and insurrection mm -hmm. as his justification for sending the troops in to enforce the law in these jurisdictions as, as the federal government dictates. Now, the funny thing is, the right who is currently saying we want smaller government, the government's oppressive, will find themselves behind a more oppressive government. What worries me is, is that the Trojan horse to get federalized, a federalized United States in that the federal government now is local law enforcement, right? We've talked about this during uh, the Summer of Love riots. We don't want the federal government to be local law enforcement. We want states to have their own jurisdictions, especially when it comes to things like Roe v. Wade, the states have the rights to decide what their laws are. If California is allowing the kidnapping of children and they will defy subpoenas and the rule of law outright because they assert that their, their morals, their legal code supersedes anyone else's, then the only option is for federal law enforcement to intervene to uphold these, these laws. If Texas issues a subpoena, the federal government says, like, we're going to have to make sure you, you, you can't do these things. So let's talk about Portland, because Portland is, to a certain degree, a lawless society. Police have orders to stand down if Antifa are committing violent assaults against people. Now, for me, we cannot live in a society like that. We cannot allow crazy, mentally disturbed anarchists to determine how our societies run. But this Agreed. is how it's being run in Portland. So recently, I went to Portland State University, stood outside with my signs with Peter Bogosian, Dr. Peter Bogosian, and the incredible James Klug. I don't know if you know him. Yeah, of course. He's amazing. Yeah. Dude's a pro. But... We specifically went there because that's the one place, the one place in the Ameri in the United States of America I was a little afraid to go to. And you cannot let fear stop you from doing anything. So we went there, we planned it out. We didn't announce when we were going beforehand because, of course, Antifa will then have time to mobilize because you can get killed there. But we went there in the morning, we stayed for a few hours, got amazing footage, and we left. And I think we showed people that we don't need to let these anarchists tell us where... And when we can have conversations, which they're, is what they're not we do. anarchists. But why doesn't the federal government move in there? Well, so just to clarify, they're okay. not they're not anarchists. Okay. They're they're hardcore authoritarians and communists. Right. Yeah. Like. Well, they think. Yeah, they think they're communists. Put them in an actual communist system, and they'll revolt. They'll lie that to you well, and tell but, you they're anarchists because right. the idea uh, anarchy literally means uh, lacking or without authority. Mm -hmm. That's how they lie to you. They come to you and say, we don't want to be in charge. We're anarchists. We don't. We think there shouldn't be a big government. By the way, do as we say or else. That's They're tankies. They're commies. They're authoritarians all the way. But it comes from the mayor and the governor there, this lawlessness. So, so do you think the federal government should intervene to restore the rule of law? Yes. I don't disagree. But I also think that can lead down a dark path when you have people who live in California and say, these are our rules. These are the laws that we've passed. And now the federal government comes in and with National Guardsmen patrolling neighborhoods, military police, 
and federal law enforcement, federal, uh, I guess they'd be civilian law enforcement, telling people that those laws don't matter anymore, that, that they're, the way they voted doesn't matter. Imagine the inverse. But if Imagine, you're going to be a state in this union, you have to abide by some collective agreement. But they have their own within their states, right? They keep voting right. for this. They're celebrating Daniel Petty being, Penny being indicted. Imagine the inverse. Joe Biden sending National Guard into Oklahoma to enforce abortion at any point, saying your laws violate national order. So we are going to enforce like the, the, the point is, you may think you're right. Certainly, we here on this show have our own opinions, uh, and I think we are right. But if you zoom out and look at the picture holistically, you can simply say faction A, faction B, and what powers can they wield? And if we assert that we are right, so we should be able to go into their state to enforce our rules on them, regardless of how they voted, they would assert the same right. And then we just hope that we win. Yeah, I look, I understand. There's a lot to this, and it's not just... But I'm, I'm, not saying, I'm, not, I'm not saying we shouldn't. I'm saying Trump should get elected, and Trump should go in under I mean, federal law and, and supersede these governments. They're violating the law in Oregon. It's not like they're following their own right. rules. They're violating the law, and no one is doing anything to bring these criminals to justice. They won't even stop them committing the crimes. They won't even stop them assaulting people when the assaults are happening. The police will just stand and watch it. They'll arrest you if you stop the assault. Yes. There's, a, yeah. there's a video of cops in They'll Seattle. They'll arrest me for getting assaulted. Yeah, yeah, there's, yeah. There's, there's a guy being threatened by a bunch of Antifa with weapons, and the cops run up and grab and arrest the victim. <sighs> it happens all the time. And then they apologize to Antifa saying, sorry about that. Yeah. So yes, I think that, uh, w w you know, I'm, I'm not an anarchist. I'm not a uh, big L libertarian. I lean libertarian on most issues. But I believe the big questions about how government is supposed to work is actually collective, uh, largely collective morality. We here in this country have a uh, Judeo-Christian moral framework for the most part. Even the atheists and agnostics in this country do, as I often mention. Bill Maher being a great example. He may not understand why he believes in the right of free speech or the right to a speedy trial or a jury uh, of your peers and, and uh, innocent until proven guilty. He may not understand why he holds those values. But if you study history, if you study the traditions of the United States and where this morality comes from and the legal system, going back to the Magna Carta, etc., you'll be like, wow, these people were all very Christian mm -hmm. and learned these lessons from the Bible. I'm not saying you need the Bible. I mean, Seamus may disagree. I'm just saying that there's a root to where this morality comes from. And if you go to Eastern countries like China, their roots on morality are very, very different. So that brings me to the question of how do we successfully run a country United States, when we're dealing with a multicultural democracy and a constitutional republic. Well, the multicultural democracy is basically breaking into our constitutional republic and trying to supplant and subvert it. We must defend ourselves from that. And that means that if we have a moral worldview and a moral framework that for the most part we agree upon, we act upon that, not under this guise of codified logical legal code. The, 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 I come to this conclusion because we were talking about Florida and uh, parental rights. Do, does a parent have a right to determine what medical treatment their kids do get or do not get? Do you think parents have the absolute right? Yes, with very few exceptions. So where I'm from, British Columbia, we have a law called the Infants Act, which essentially states that parental approval is not needed for any medical procedure at any age, provided the doctor can understand, the doctor thinks it's necessary, and the doctor thinks the child can understand. And what happened a year or two ago, a father went to jail. His name's Rob Hoogland because he spoke out against his daughter's transition, which he was powerless to stop. The endocrinologist, a man named Brendan Hirsch, sent him a letter saying he could be a friend and advisor to his own 13-year-old daughter, but he couldn't stop her from receiving testosterone. Now, so, the only way that law would ever make sense for me is in the case of maybe a Jehovah's Witness who won't allow a blood transfusion because their child's going to die yeah. and they'll let their child die. In that case, I'd say, sure, intervene. But in almost any other circumstance, I don't get it. So the reason I bring this up is the left's argument is that parents should have final say over what treatments their kids uh, get. And that if, you know, the, the, the child wants to get a, 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 you know, a sex change surgery or whatever, that the parents and the doctor decide the government shouldn't intervene. But parents don't have the right to abuse their children. But this parents, is child abuse. Amen. And I'm not arguing. I'm saying mm -hmm. the left argues this position while simultaneously arguing the government should be allowed to mandate children receive a medical treatment, i.e. the vaccine. Conservatives have an inversion. 
Conservatives argue the government should stop a parent from trying to give their children a sex change under the argument as you just made. It is it is abusive. And at the same time, the government should not be able to apply a mandate on, va- on a vaccine. I am not saying one idea is right or wrong. What I'm saying is there are different views under the very similar parental rights argument. And of course, we we on this side will assert we are actually right and we can break down the logic of that. But ultimately, when it comes down to explaining the principle of parental rights, you run into a, a simple question. When is where is the moral line for you? When do you say the parents are abusing their kids and not giving them treatment? Well, obviously for us, a child sex change is abuse. No question. The left doesn't see it that way. Therefore, the principle of parental rights means nothing. All that matters is the moral question that we agree upon. And if that's the case, then I believe this country should be run on what is our collective moral framework and we must defend it. I just want to say one thing. I use this expression, the left, all the time. It is the left who are pushing this. But it's not all the left. Most leftists agree with us on this. When I was at Boston Children's Hospital last year, I had a protest there. There were 200 Antifa people on the other side of the street. There were about 10 parents standing with me. Eight or nine of them were lifelong Democrat voters, moms, who know that they're girls are girls and not boys. Now, the mayor of Boston, Mayor Wu, said that I was a white supremacist on a tour of terror. <laughs> wow. And they're standing with me were a bunch of lifelong Democrats. The far left has taken hostage the entire left. Because if anyone on the left speaks up about any of this, they're then deemed the bigot, they're anti-LGBT, these four letters that paralyze people, (laughs) they're kicked out of their political parties. So all the normal leftists, I say normal leftists, I don't agree with many of their ideologies at all. But the the moderate leftists aren't allowed to say anything. It's really this 10% of the party that's taken the whole party hostage. but, But look, here I am, banging on the door of the right wing, begging to be called a conservative, but Seamus keeps calling me a liberal. I keep, yeah, this guy's a liberal over here. You know, but you, you, you Seamus, Seamus has made the argument on this show, if you are pro-choice, <laughs> you can't be a conservative. Yeah, I, I think that's a weighted issue. Yeah, I, I right. don't think that you can and, be a conservative and be pro-choice. That's such a fundamental issue to the parties. So, so I don't so think so you if, 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 in if, classical if, terms, you're a liberal. Where, yeah. in, the in, word in, liberty in, comes from the Latin libertad, meaning freedom. But now, now the left says the word liberty itself is a dog whistle for fascism. But, but, <laughs> that's right. But not even, not even the class classical sense, not even the philosophical sense. If you look up traditional liberalism or social liberal li- liberalism in this country, you'll be like, that actually sounds like Tim a whole lot. This is where Democrats were for a long time. So these people you're mentioning, yeah. they're probably very much in a similar political space to where we on this show are. Mm-hmm. Yet they call this show conservative. They call right. me a conservative commentator, despite the fact that I argue with conservatives all the time. Yeah. Especially on issues like this. Yeah, I'm called the far right, but I'm pretty centrist. It depends on the issue. Well, I, I also think it's hilarious that you were... <laughs> <laughs> referred to as a white supremacist on a tour of terror yeah. because <laughs> they, they'll just say anything yeah. they'll just say anything now i don't know i mean I've, I've seen a bit of your work but i haven't heard much uh on racial politics from you how can they even claim white supremacists is this just because everything fits under the alphabet soup label and oh. so if you oppose that stuff you're a, a white racist well, as well? They, they, they put well the black, look at my because you're white yeah yeah, yeah so I'm that's white. it well hold okay. on hold on brilliant you're tall, I was at, so you must be scaring you're, people. A, you're a supremacist and you're white therefore get yeah. it <laughs> Yeah, at Portland State, this professor, he's a geology professor, he's an adjunct professor, he came out to counter-protest us on his bike, standing right in front of us so I couldn't talk to people, and then he took his shirt off, his sweater off, to reveal that he's been on estrogen. Now, this guy said that we were white supremacists, and I said, hold on, what, what makes me a white supremacist? He said, well, look at you. I said, well, you're white. So his explanation ultimately was that transphobia is the tip of the spear of white supremacy. (laughs) Let me tell you, I was at Occupy Uh, Wall Street and they were trying to figure out what their main goal was going to be. And they're talking about the banks and the corruption. And then in exasperation, some guy stands up screaming at the top of his lungs. How do you people not understand? Fracking is everything. Just furious fracking. And I'm just like, Yo, fracking is like, literally- like, the frack down, okay? You're- fracking has nothing to do with this president getting elected and like, but this guy in his brain, the only thing it could process was fracking. He thought the president was only elected because big oil companies were investing in those who would allow fracking and that the reason why climate change is happening is fracking. The reason why there's social disorder is because these big oil companies, that was the center of his universe. and was the only thing he could comprehend. Very much like this guy, his whole world is trans issues. So any argument 
is the most paramount problem the world is facing. Yes, these leftists would sooner have us import oil from Saudi Arabia than produce it ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, that's what they put How dare you? That's right. I mean, we can't drill in the United States because when we pull oil out of the ground and burn it, that's bad for the environment. But when we burn oil, other people pulled out of the ground, that's good for the environment. Well, Mm -hmm. how about we just say when we create completely emission free energy, nuclear. Yeah. They also don't want us doing that either. It's almost like they just want to neuter energy independence or something like that. Like they don't Uh, care about our country and want Uh, it to fail. Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. and become a member over at Timcast.com for uncensored members only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out and we'll see you all next time.